Using no-name brand components in your van or RV electrical system is definitely a way to cut costs, but more often than not, the quality, warranty, and customer service downsides to choosing this method of saving money outweighs the cost savings. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the more strategic ways to decrease cost through system design while using the high quality components that you want to still get the most bang for your buck. And so you can do it right the first time so you don't have to do it twice, which will also save money. Let's get started. The first and most obvious way to save money on your camper electrical system is simply to have realistic expectations of what you're going to power. Now, if you need to power your phone, your lights, your fans, your air conditioner, and your Tesla coil, you're going to need to build a very expensive electrical system to support those loads. Now you can build a much more budget friendly system if you can just leave your Tesla coil at home and travel to cooler environments that eliminate, eliminate. or eliminate air conditioner usage. Now there are batteries of many different storage capacities on the market and using larger batteries, but fewer of them is a great way to save money on your electrical system without sacrificing capacity. Battleborn Batteries, for example, has a 100 amp hour battery and a 270 amp hour battery. And both of them are actually the same price per amp hour, uh, but here's where the cost gets different and it's in the wiring. If you need five to 600 amp hours of battery bank capacity, the Explorus Life Battery Bank wiring kit required to wire six batteries together is three and a half times more expensive than the two battery bank wiring kit and would save about $125 in wire and lugs. Copper is very expensive. Plus, it takes five times as long to wire six batteries together as it does two batteries, and time is money. Time is money, boy! Similar to batteries, if you opt to use larger but fewer solar panels, it's gonna save you some money. For example, a 200 watt solar panel from Rich Solar is about twice as expensive as a 100 watt solar panel with shipping included. So dollar per watt, it doesn't make a lot of difference, but it takes twice as many mounting brackets and screws and connectors to mount the smaller panels, which does add up. Plus, if you put a dollar amount on your time, similar to batteries, installing twice as many smaller panels will take you twice as long as installing fewer larger panels for the same power output. If you have a three to 400 amp hour battery bank, you should aim for around six to 800 watts of solar if you have the room. Now there is only one way to wire seven 100 watt solar panels to deliver adequate voltage to the charge controller. And that one way will climb to over 150 volts, which requires a charge controller capable of handling such high voltages. Now, if you actually opt for more power at 800 watts, you can use four 200 watt panels, which will have slightly lower solar array voltage, but still adequate for the MPPT solar charge controller, which will result in a lower voltage charge controller being able to be used, which will save money. So opting for 800 watts over 700 watts in this scenario would save about 25 bucks and you'd have more power coming from the array. A higher system voltage lowers the amperage for components with the same wattage output. For example, the 12 volt 3 kVA Victron MultiPlus requires 4 watt wire, and the 24 volt MultiPlus 3 kVA requires 1 watt wire, which is nearly half the price. Alternatively, if you have an adequately sized battery bank, you can get more bang for your buck by going with a 24 volt system over a 12 volt system. For example, both the 12 volt 3 kVA MultiPlus and the 24 volt 5 kVA Quattro call for a 4 watt wire in their user manual. So you're getting more inverter output capacity with the same wire size since the higher voltage of the 24 volt system lowers the amperage of the 5 kVA output to near what the 12 volt 3 kV output would be. Similarly, with solar arrays, choosing a 24 volt system over a 12 volt system results in a smaller charge controller being able to be used for the same wattage output since the amperage is lower as the voltage climbs for the same wattage. 
Now, 12 volt systems are the simplest to understand for mobile power systems like vans and RVs. So if this is your first off-grid electrical system you've ever built, I still strongly recommend 12 volt systems because the fastest way to blow your budget on a build is to make a mistake and wire something incorrectly. For example, this is the result of somebody running 12 volt components from wires sized for a 24 volt system, which got very expensive in a hurry. A 24 volt system, apples to apples, will be less expensive than a 12 volt system due to the smaller wires and smaller charge controller that we can use, but it's not going to be a life changing amount, likely a couple hundred bucks. For example, consider these two similarly equipped systems. For the 12 volt system, we've got the Explore 50 amp tow behind camper wiring kit, the Explorus Life 1200 watt solar charging wiring kit for 12 volt battery banks, and six Battleborn 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries. These three items come to a total of $11,169.49. Now, a 24 volt system with the exact same output capacities is going to consist of the Explore 50 amp 24 volt tow behind camper wiring kit, the Explorus Life 1200 watt solar charging wiring kit for 24 volt battery banks, and six Battleborn 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries wired in series parallel to form a 24 volt battery bank. And the total for that is going to be about $10,367.19. So in this very popular system, the difference in it being 24 volt versus 12 volt is a difference of about $800 or 7% savings, which is a bit, but it's definitely not half the amount like a lot of people in various Facebook groups would like you to believe. The price differences will get exponentially bigger for larger solar arrays where second or additional solar charge controllers would be needed. The same concepts are true for 48 volt systems, but as of today, 48 volt switches and fuses are more expensive and harder to come by. For example, the ever popular $40 Blue C Master Battery Switch is not rated for the 58 volts that it takes to charge a 48 volt battery bank. Instead, we have to use DC breakers and a box which cost in the hundreds of dollars range depending on how many batteries are added. But as I'm always looking for solutions, keep your eyes peeled on shop.explorus.life for 48 volt camper electrical systems in the future. And now it's easy enough to just go to Amazon and haphazardly buy a bunch of components, wires, lugs, and start wiring stuff together. You know, when you're spending, you know, $50 here, $70 here, $80 here, it might not seem like that much. But behind the scenes of these videos, we actually put together complete wiring kits that take care of the guesswork. And if time is money, this will save you tons and will guarantee that your system is set up right the first time. Plus, we sell all of our components at the same price as everybody else on the internet, and our wiring kits are within 5% on what you can find piecemealing everything together through Amazon. So although that won't necessarily save you money, you're still gonna be in the same ballpark and it's gonna save you the time and the cost of errors at no upcharge to you. And buying from us funds these videos we make available for free, which I'd like to think there's some value in. So like I said at the start of this video, choosing no name brand components to save costs in a camper electrical system often leads to quality and warranty issues. And in this video, we've talked about the more strategic ways to reduce expenses without sacrificing quality. By being realistic about your power needs, using fewer batteries, opting for larger solar panels, pre-planning your solar array, and considering a higher voltage system, you can achieve cost savings while maintaining reliability. Ultimately, choosing high quality components for your van or RV electrical system is going to save you money in the long run because if you do it right the first time, you don't have to do it again. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.